If you've ever been in one of our southern states, you may have taken a sightseeing trip just as this family. A trip to see one of the plantation homes that were built before the Civil War. This beautiful mansion is one of many homesteads that were once the residences of southern planters. These homes were centers of plantation life. Inside the mansion, we can get some idea of the luxuries that a wealthy plantation family enjoyed. The home was often beautifully furnished. Planters imported fine household goods from England. These things represent part of the wealth that came from products grown on the plantation. Here is a map that explains how this plantation was organized. It was almost a little community by itself. Most of the sections of land were devoted to one crop, such as cotton. Other sections contained orchards, vegetable gardens, and pastures, the source of food for the people and the work animals. The buildings included the planter's home, a mill, workshops, and a row of small cabins for the slaves, who did almost all the work. We can still find remnants of some of these things on old plantations. These small houses were for the slaves who worked on the plantation. In this carriage house, the plantation vehicles were kept and repaired. In the blacksmith shop, such things as tools, wheel rims, and plowshares were made. And all of this was done by hand, the hand labor of the slaves. But what made each plantation depend mostly on its own labor and its own products? The answer is poor transportation. There were few roads and many of them were in poor condition. So there was little commercial traffic between plantations. Travel was so difficult that each plantation was practically isolated and so had to be almost self-sufficient. The easiest means of travel was by riverboat, and so many plantations were located along the rivers. At the boat landing, manufactured goods from cities could be brought in. Crops grown on the plantation could be sent out. Most plantations raised and shipped only one crop. In most plantations near the Mississippi, the one crop was cotton. Cotton was such an important part of the plantation system that it came to be called King Cotton. The enormous amount of hand labor required to grow and pick the cotton was supplied by great numbers of slaves. This then was the economic background of the plantation. Cheap slave labor producing one main crop on vast tracts of land owned by the planter. But the plantation was more than an economic organization. It was a social organization as well. The planter and his slaves were part of an unusual class system. The sharp division of people into two main groups, the owners and the slaves, left a lasting influence on the society of the South. What was that society like? For the plantation owner and his family, it was an aristocratic kind of society. Gentle manners, courtesy, hospitality. Many of the ideas that we still associate with the people of the South came from the days when plantation life was in full flower. This then was the social organization of the plantation. The aristocratic class of the landowners who had wealth and privileges and the laboring class of the slaves who had little wealth and few privileges. The plantation system in the United States reached its greatest development before the Civil War. By 1860, plantations reached from Virginia to Texas. On some of these, tobacco was produced. On others, sugar was grown. On others, Cotton was the main crop. Whatever the crop, 
the system of producing was similar. Cheap labor, one crop, and vast tracts of land. These are some of the things we can better understand when we visit one of the old plantation homes of the past. But did this plantation life influence the modern South? Can we find anything left of the plantation system? We might find part of the answer as we look around us in the South today. Here is a scene that tells us part of the story. This plantation home was abandoned during the Civil War. Great changes in the plantation system occurred during the war. The freeing of the slaves and the great financial burden of the war disrupted the economic pattern. Some planters went bankrupt and lost possession of their plantations. But the plantation system did not entirely disappear. Some elements of that system did not change. The land, cultivated for generations and still productive, remained. The source of labor, great numbers of Negroes, remained. The demand for cotton remained. And the 